Welcome back, Marinochka. Let's talk about self-care. You know, this yeah. is the subject that you probably teach and really convince people to put themselves as a priority in their schedule first. Must. Um, for me personally, I was suffering from a lot of back pain. It all began 30 years ago when I gave birth to my oldest son, my firstborn, after a epidural. I came home after the hospital and then my back was constantly in pain and I just couldn't figure out how is it that I could help myself, not um, by medications, because that's the first thing that doctors prescribe me. When I went to the doctor, they did the x-ray and then they asked me, do you do stretching exercises and yoga? And I said, no. And they said, okay, here you go. Take this medications. And so what's in those medications? Mm -hmm. It's painkillers. And it's muscle relaxers. And if anybody knows me personally very closely, and you know me, Marina, yes. this is not the state of mind that Olga would enjoy to be herself putting into. Even during COVID, when I was suffering through tremendous stress and a lot of pain and all this uncertainty, maybe I took once muscle relaxer. Mm -hmm. And I just hated the feeling that it was creating in my mouth, in my tongue, in my, you know... Um, in my hands, in my in my body, I just wasn't myself. I just felt like I was not Olga. I felt like I couldn't even understand what was going on with my body. Painkillers also, it was not something that I could just keep taking every single day and feeling like, you know what, back pain, okay, let's take a painkiller and go. They don't really cure the problem. They just band-aid the moment, but then the problem is there. It keeps coming back and keeps coming yes, back. Yes. And that's when I went to a physical therapist, Stanley. Mm -hmm. uh, he's an amazing physical therapist in the community. And I remember very clearly he said to me, Olga, you know, I'm going to do for you all this therapy, mm -hmm. but do you stretch? Do you meditate? Do you do yoga? And I looked at him and I said, do you know anybody? And he said to me, yes, I do. And that's how your name came across. Yes. And I'm very grateful from that day on, you and I stay connected. We talk about many different uh, life circumstances. Four years. Okay, for years now. Four, yeah. Four, four. four years four right years. now. I remember the day when I came to you for the very first time and I said, Marina, I'm a very spiritual person. I need first to believe that we need to connect as humans. Definitely. And you welcome me into your studio. I will never forget that day. I came with Gabriel, my youngest son. And when we left your studio, we felt like newborn. We felt so cleared. And the mind and the emotional state was like better than any vacation I ever been on. That's how people I see. left your studio. I was so refreshed and I felt so empowered. And I looked at my son and I said, weird feeling. How do you feel? He was, my, I feel so refreshed. I said, interesting. I think we need to go back there. And that's how our journey began. So let's talk a little bit more about our children, the back pain, and everything that people are going through and how important it is to fix yourself first, get our children involved. Whenever I go, unintentionally, I always ask my children to join. Now I ask my daughter-in-law to join. And now I'll be asking my granddaughter to join. They don't even understand that sometimes I'm doing it very playfully, not because I'm doing it intentionally, it just happens. But I feel like they're taking also tremendous impact on every step that I take, they take with me. And so as a family, as um, business owners, I feel this is super important to get not only improving your mind, your personal state, but also improving our child's life, our children's life, and guiding them to stay away from drugs, stay away from anything that's internally, artificially making you feel like you are better, but you're not. You're not. You're not. And the community right now, let's talk about the reality here. The community is losing so many beautiful souls because they are not guided in the right direction. And this is why we took the chance and decided to record those episodes. So if we could impact at least one life, if we could improve at least one soul, that would be tremendous. Um, if you want to change yourself, um, I would recommend to start morning. The way you start your morning, that's the way it's going to be your day. You need to create routine. Like I have my routines. I get up in the morning. First thing I do, I stretch. I have a mat in my ba bedroom. I stretch five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It doesn't matter how busy you are, even one minute. But you have that routine. 
Then some people maybe like to drink water. No, I never touch my phone when I get up, never. And I recommend all my students do not touch your phone because when you get up in the morning, you look at your phone, what's the bad news? Somebody dies, things happen, and the whole day is going to be a mess. You're going to have a bad digestion. You're not going to be able to have breakfast. You don't bre- have breakfast, it's going to be other issues. You, you, you're right. hungry, you can focus at work. So never touch phone. So I take a shower, I drink my water, I do a little bit of meditation, then I prepare my breakfast and I eat my breakfast at home and I make my own breakfast. I don't buy, I don't eat in the car. It's horrible for digestion. You have to sit, look at your food, smell, feel it, chew it, and connect with all these five senses with the food so it digests properly. But what we do, we get up, don't drink water. They take the breakfast on the go, in a car, or in an Uber. It's very unhealthy. So very important to have a good and productive routines in the morning because how you're going to start your morning, that's the way it's going to be your day. Also, in self-care, I always recommend my students to go for a walk. 45 minutes of work. And some people say, oh, no, I just run from subway to subway or from work to work. No, it's not walking. Walking when you connect with yourself. You dress up properly, comfortable shoes. You look at the sky because sky, when you look at the sky, you create a lot of positive thoughts. Okay, you look at the birds, you're listening to the birds, you're connecting with nature. But what's happening? Eight hours in in the building, right, working. Then you run home, cooking it again in the kitchen, right? And then what you do, watch TV and you sleep. Again, you get up and go, you go back. Where where you connect with nature? That's why we have a lot of anxiety. That's why we have miscommunication between parents and kids. People don't listen because they have so much stories built in their head. People don't have enough patience. People not to relax. People not grateful. People always looking for something big and big. I want this, this. No. So it's we disconnect with nature. Look at the birds. Look at the animals. They're happy. So I think it's very important to start with yourself. Again, if you want to change anything in life or anyone, start with yourself. Begin You're not going to be able to change your kids. You're not going to be able to change your spouses or your bosses or your neighbors. No, you when you change yourself, you're going to reflect. The study showed, um, I think it's 1972, it was uh, done a test on the brain. Scientists find out we have a mirror cells. Mirror cells, for example, if you do something, you know, you're going to reflect me, I'm going to mirror you. If I'm calm, my spouse is going to be calm. I do this experiment on me. So every morning when I get up, you know, I make breakfast with my husband and lunch every morning. And I, got, I get up early. I'm 5 o'clock in the morning. I, wow. I'm early bird. I love to get up when everybody sleeps. It's my time. I enjoy. So, and I in the morning, I say, hey, good morning. Uh, breakfast and lunch, it's ready. Have a wonderful day. That's it. It puts a smile on his face. Somebody cares for him. Just do these things. Show love. Show gratitude. Show that you do care. People are mistaking love. They think if somebody loves, they have to take. No, when you love, you give. And you don't ask. And eventually, my husband said, hey, how are you? How's your day? I love you. You know, it's a reflection of me. I'm nicer. He's going to be nicer. You show example. And I think I'm not taking responsibilities from the man. I think everything comes from women. Peace, harmony. Lots of men would love watching this episode. But, but, but that's true. You know, I do a lot of um, experiments and I'm doing experiments on myself in do my home. Do you do home. couples therapy? I do a lot of couple therapy, yes. Yes. Young generation, I will benefiting a lot. Because I think before people get married, they should come through you for the, X yes, amount of I hours. Yes, I do. I do have girls who come to me for marriage because they're very insecure. They don't know if it's right for them. Actually, I have this girl who I helped a lot. She she was very, very, she had very negative thoughts. I was actually nervous because I never, never experienced that. How can I help her? So we went to different doctors, psychiatrists. I was there because she couldn't open up to her parents. She was shy to tell her parents this was happening because they're going to judge her. So I took this girl to a few doctors because I thought it's very serious. The doctors right away said, take pills. But in the meantime, we, I said, listen, this is the doctor. We need to make sure it's you safe. And in the meantime, we're going to do yoga. But what I love about this girl, because she was very committed. She, we did three times a week yoga, pr- private. Then she was every morning doing yoga, one hour a day walking, drinking water, changed diet completely, completely, okay? So uh, he had, she had the hiccups all day. So by breathing, I'm teaching her breathing slowly, hiccups done, gone. She had problem problem with digestion, she had acid reflex, changing diet, gone. 
Wow. She was taking a lot of different medicine. She's like, Maureen, it's a miracle. So what? We after are a miracle. Yes. After six months, this girl, no pills, no thoughts, normal beautiful human being. And you know what helped her actually? I asked, what's your passion? She said, I love to do art. So I pushed her to do art because through art, she shifts her thoughts, her mind on something positive. And that's how she come out of this negative thought, natural way of healing. And we did it. And now she's sharing all this wisdom and knowledge with all her friends and family. And you should have a class and invite her over. Right. We need, and she probably would. And I'm so fascinated how by pushing Human me body can change. change. And it's, it was also on t- it was a lot for me to challenge myself. Oh, can I help her? And we did. And through this experiment and experience, I realized I have a power of helping other people and not only helping them, guiding them, they helping me to be a better person because it's like two way street. Uh, they learn from me. I'm learning from them. It's a, it's exchange of energy. I'm sure you do the same thing in business, right? When you sell the Absolutely. house, you're learning from them. Of course. They're learning from you. You're Every sharing. the biggest teacher. Right. It's, it's a sharing energy. And uh, it's constant learning. And I think I will never stop learning. It's, oh, it's amazing. Cool. And you know what I realized? We have only one life. Why would? Why to waste? Why to waste? We are such a blessing. Why to waste? And why to complain? Stop complaining. Life is beautiful. Go outside. Enjoy. If you don't have something, make something of it. I think it's all up to you. Either you make it or you break it. Well, it's a made up mind, Marina. But it's all up It's a made up mind. But you identified in this girl who was having problems Mm -hmm. that she had a talent to paint. Yes. And you helped her dive deeper into her being, right? Yes. Dive deeper into identifying what is her hobby, what makes her happy. Yes, that's it. And the minute people identify this this little moment where they find their love for something. So for me, for example, I love sales. That's where my true passion is. That's it. But now by sharing all this knowledge and experience with my audience, I found that being a podcaster and recording, it's also something that I like to give back to the community and to people that follow me. But it also comes back to my clients, more exposure through me for their properties that we are selling nowadays. It's always the thought about how can you improve yourself, but then also give back to those you serve. Exactly. That's the point behind it. And then when people find their true passion, that's going to give more and more light into others. So talking about children, I personally see a lot of children that are lost and really can't find their passion, can't find their hobbies. And what do they do? They go hang out with friends and they'll go do some stuff that they shouldn't do. And then it just develops into something that becomes a complete tragedy. Yes. Yes. Not only for themselves, for their parents and the community. Yes. And we are losing so many young people, so many young generations. It's just not acceptable, in my opinion. Um, what would be your piece of advice to recommend those families and those children and, and those that just want to stay on the healthy route, how to improve, how to change, how to really learn to speak to your mind, to yourself? How do you teach them to connect? I think we all come with baggage when we grow, you know, as a parent, like you're not going to be like parent right away, right? You growing and all this knowledge and all this um, habits, negative or positive, you take from childhood. Okay. So it's going to be very hard to change yourself in order to help your kids. You need to learn how to listen to them by listening, by understanding by again changing yourself the only way you're going to be able to change your kid by changing yourself you need to change the way you look at life work on yourself read good books and then listen to your kids because you're not going to be able to give good advice to your child if you're eating wrong if you're thinking wrong if you're doing the mistakes they look they watch you but i think it's very important again being peaceful bring peace at home show more love by showing love it doesn't mean like by different gadgets, or go out to different expensive restaurants, taking kids, right? Or taking to kind of expensive museums, activities, right? Do something together. You need to communicate. Number one, talk to your kids. Explain. If you don't see the kid whole week, right? 
And once a week, you take the kid to restaurant for breakfast and then you go to the zoo and you come back and you spend time for, no, that's not communicating. Connection. Through the days, the child came from home, from school. Hey, how was your day? Um, did you have any chance? Do you need my help? Hey, you know, do you want to play basketball? Do you want to play chess? You know, can we do this? And, you know, every day, text in the morning. Hey, how was your day? How's your school? Even if you don't have time, call, pick up the phone, call. Hey, how are you doing? You need to come once a week is not enough. It's not enough. And by buying expensive stuff or to going some to expensive restaurant, it's not communicating. Right. Okay. It's not, it's like you're doing favor. Oh, you know what? It's just justifying yourself. No. Every day, hey, you know what? I noticed something. You were very rude to this guy or to your mother. No, I think it's not appropriate. She's your mom. Be be nicer. Like something like this, you know? Or you know what? You did something wrong here. I, I think you should be better doing this, you know? Or do you have any advice? Or even you made a mistake, you know, say, you know, I do apologize if I was rude to you. Parents should learn how to apologize to kids too. I think it's very important because we're not always right. We also make a mistake. Just say, hey, sorry, sorry, you know, I was very disrespectful to you, but I will try to control it. You showing your kid, it's okay. I made a mistake. I'm going to get better. Authenticity. Yes. But if you're going to say, I'm always right, I'm always, everything which you do is going to come back to you. Everything. You scream, kid's going to scream. You're going to hide, kid's going to hide. You're going to lie, kid's going to lie. I have a lot of girls who come to me and they say, they're complaining about their husband, about lives. They say, why did you marry this guy? It's like, oh, you know what? I want to get rid of from house. So the house is not comfortable. So they have to leave. They have to get married. Or, oh, you know what? I'm too old. I need to get married. Okay, the age may be the problem. Or I, maybe I will never get married because parents probably said, oh my God, you're so stupid. Yes. Yeah, some parents to call names wow. and and p kids what happens with kids they become what self they lose confidence they lose confidence and okay yeah. oh i'm going to marry to any whoever comes no. i'm not worth enough right no. or oh, you're so stupid you can't go to school some people strong they can show and prove the to right. parents or to right. grandparents or to friends but some people are weak and they go into themselves and then which they is, struggle yeah they struggle but i think to listen to understand but how you listen when you come when you breathe Right. When you stretch, when you relax, when you eat healthy food, when you go for a walk, when you're not on the phone 10, 10 hours a day with your girlfriends, where are you going, which vacation, what did you eat, which restaurant? No. Or look at this. Women spend half a day in doing hair instead of doing other things or two hours in the nails, nail salon. Yeah, nails great. Don't get me wrong. You have to care of your uh, outer body. But what's most important, inner. Have to be, everything should be balanced. Outside plus inside. But we do one thing, but we forget about inner peace, inner cleanse, cleansing and cleaning here. This requires more work right. than being out. Outside. Outside, again, it's very important, but it should be balanced. Balance. How often, Marina, do you suggest people do yoga and meditation? Excellent question. I always ask my teacher, how often when I start the yoga? And she said, Marina, how often do you eat? I said, two, three times a Practice two, three times a day. The more you practice, it's better. It's more effective. Your body, your mind, you know, you become more calm. If you don't have time, do 10, 15 minutes in the morning. Do 10, 15 minutes at during the daytime. You can do in a chair at workplace. Gently shift your body, some stretches. Get up, do breathing. Just maybe if you don't have time or place, you can go to the restroom. That's what I used to do. Go to the restroom. Nobody sees you. Do some stretches, okay? In a train, you can just close your eyes and breathe. In a car, just breathing and maybe some gentle stretches with the shoulders or body. You can do anywhere as long as you're aware of your body. My goal is to bring awareness of breathing of your body. And when you do aware of your breathing and your posture, you become more calm, more relaxed and more connected. Again, yoga you can do anywhere you want. Any times you want. The more you do it, the more effective. But professionally, if you come two, three times a week, one hour, consistency, and you kind of push yourself, you, you develop more endurance and strength, it's, of course, better. Wow, this was so much information, Marina. Thank you so much for joining me here at sure. this studio. My pleasure. And I can't wait for our listeners and our audience to follow us and to watch everything yes. we have to share. We have huge plans to uh, create a show on how to cook and uh, showcase. And easy, simple to cook. Simple and easy preparations and of meals. We're going to do that. We're going to also talk about, you know, classes. 
We also will talk about the couples therapy. Yes. Potentially, we definitely would like to implement that because I think anybody before they get married, they for should business people exactly for business people before exactly the meetings, how to control your temper, your emotions, emotions. your reactions. Yes. Uh, it's all super important. So everyone, thank you for watching. Please understand we're doing this all for you because we love you. And we do want you to pick at least one good, powerful lesson from all of this and impact and improve your life so then you could improve others. Thanks for watching and we will be staying connected. Thank, thank you. you, Ola.